Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more DCS 810 c Today we're looking at flight plan navigation. The aircraft is parked in hardened aircraft shelter 23 at Coboletti. We're preparing for a flight to Senaki Kolki. Navigation mode IGI. The embedded GPS INS or IGI is the ATNC's primary navigation system. The primary interface to the IGI is the control display unit or CDU. For convenience, the CDU can be repeated on the multifunction color display or MFCD. To navigate to Senaki Kolki, we'll use a flight plan. 20 flight plans can be stored in the flight plan database and each flight plan can have 40 waypoints. The flight plan is usually created in the mission editor or planner and is automatically loaded and made active when entering the aircraft. Steer point dial, flight plan. In this position, all waypoints in the active flight plan are active. This position is also required to display the flight plan route on the tactical awareness display or TAD. To view the Flight Plan Manager page, press Function Select key or FSK FPM. The first and second lines of every CDU page include a series of common elements. The page title, the active flight plan, the current steer point number and the figure of merit or FOM. The Digital Terrain System Application Software or DTSAS is a digital elevation database. Lower FOM values indicate greater data accuracy. The second line is reserved for CDU system annunciations and is normally blank. Note that incrementation of waypoints is set to automatic. In this state, when a steer point is overflown, the steer point increments to the next waypoint in the active flight plan. If desired, press the corresponding line select key or LSK to change to manual steer point incrementation. To view waypoints, set the Auxiliary Avionics Panel or AAP page dial to waypoint. The CDU is now displaying the waypoint page. This page displays information on the selected waypoint. The number and name of the waypoint, time to go or TTG, which is the time to go to the selected waypoint at the current ground speed displayed in hours, minutes and seconds, or as eight asterisks when ground speed is less than three knots, and magnetic heading and distance in nautical miles to the waypoint. To select a different waypoint, enter the desired waypoint number in the scratch pad with the CDU keypad and press the top left line select key or LSK, or enter the waypoint name and press the top right LSK. You may also cycle through the waypoints with the CDU rocker switch. Note the arrow next to the waypoint option. This indicates a page branch. To view a page with more detailed information on the selected waypoint, press the corresponding LSK. The CDU is now displaying the Waypoint Information page. To return to the Waypoint page, press the CDU Previous FSK. Current steer point data, TTG, heading and distance is displayed at the bottom left of the CDU. Note that selecting a different waypoint does not make it the steer point. To select a steer point with the CDU, First set the AAP page dial to steer point. The CDU is now displaying the steer point information page. This displays information on the current steer point. The number and name of the steer point, desired magnetic heading, distance to steer point, elevation at steer point, bearing radial to steer point, time to go to reach steer point, time on target arrival time at steer point, 
and current wind direction and speed. To change the steer point, enter the desired waypoint number or name, or use the CDU rocker switch to cycle through the waypoints. The steer point can also be changed with the steer point toggle switch. The switch defaults to the centre position, while in the up and down positions it cycles through the waypoints. The steer point toggle switch is replicated on the upfront controls, or UFC. The selected waypoint is now the steer point, and steering information is provided on the head-up display, or HUD, the TAD, and HSI and ADI if steer point is the secondary navigation mode. To view all the waypoints in the flight plan, increase the TAD scale. To increase the TAD scale, the MFCD must first be made Center of Interest, or SOI. To make the left MFCD SOI, press Option Select button, or OSB 15. The MFCD can also be made SOI by pressing Hot Ask Coolie switch left. To increase TAD scale, press Data Management switch, or DMS, forward. To decrease TAD scale, press DMS aft. The steer point is displayed on the TAD as a yellow box. The number displayed next to the box is the number of the waypoint selected as the steer point. By default, the steer point is sensor point of interest, or SPI. The SPI symbol looks like a free tier wedding cake on the TAD. To select TACAN as the secondary navigation mode, press the TACAN button on the Navigation Mode Select panel or NIMSIP. To use the Cobaletti TACAN channel, enter 67 using the channel selector switches. Second mode, transmit receive. Transmit receive mode receives bearing, course deviation, station identification and range information from the TACAN. The station identifies itself by transmitting its call letters in Morse code every 37.2 seconds. To adjust the volume of the TACAN audio signal, rotate the volume knob. We will follow the 043 TACAN radial during our initial departure. This radial leads to Compulsory Reporting Point, or CRP, northeast, which is 7.7 .7 miles from Cobaletti. Set the HSI course to the 043 TACAN radial. On takeoff, we climb to 300 feet on the runway heading. At 300 feet, we turn left to a course of 039 degrees to intercept the CRP Northeast 043 radial. Note the distance from the Cobaletti Tacan as indicated on the HSI, and the distance to the steer point on the hood. We're looking at the navigation hood. The total velocity vector, or TVV, indicates the direction of flight of the aircraft. It is also referred to as the flight path marker, or FPM. The flight path ladder indicates aircraft path angle. Solid lines indicate positive flight path angles, with dashed lines negative. The lines are displayed in 5 degree increments. 
Airspeed is displayed in the range 50 to 500 knots. A T indicates true airspeed and G indicates ground speed. If no letter is present, speed is indicated airspeed. Below the airspeed indication is the required airspeed. When a time on target has been set, this number indicates the airspeed required to reach the steer point at the time defined. In navigation and air-to-air -air modes, altitude is the uncorrected barometric altitude. Altitude range is minus 2,000 to 38,000 feet, displayed to the nearest 10 feet. The current flight path angle is displayed below the altitude. The following information is present at the bottom right. The radar altitude, which is displayed as four numbers, or four X's if radar altitude is invalid or above 5,000 feet AGL, followed by an R. Steer point number and name. Steer point distance to go and elevation. Time to go and time on target. The current time in GMT or hack time. Hack time acts as a countdown timer. The heading tape indicates magnetic heading. Each mark on the tape represents five degrees of magnetic heading with a two digit number indicating heading at each 10 degree interval. The desired magnetic heading mark is below the heading tape. Center the desired magnetic heading mark on the heading tape to fly directly to the steer point. If the desired heading mark is not present on the scale, the desired heading is displayed as a number with an arrow indicating the shortest turn to the desired magnetic heading. Note the speed line extending from the TVV. The speed line extends from the TVV towards the steer point when the steer point is outside the HUD field of view. Magnetic heading and distance to the steer point are clamped to the HUD FOV limit. Note that the HSI CDI needle has centered. This indicates that we are on the 043 TACAN radial. We would now turn to a course of 043 and continue to CRP Northeast. At CRP Northeast, we assume ATC clearance to resume own navigation, set secondary navigation mode to steer point, and continue to the next waypoint, which has automatically become the steer point. I hope you enjoyed that look at flight plan navigation, feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you again for the next DCS 810C video.